Chapter 30. Sin. The Bible defines sin thus, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. 1 John 3, 4. Our Lord makes clear that the source of sin is the heart of man. Matthew 15, 19. This is a very important fact and very necessary for us to understand. All too many people reduce sin to an act, for example, one of murder, adultery, theft, false witness, or covetousness. Clearly, all these things are examples of sinful acts, but sin is much more than an act. It is first and foremost a condition in the heart and mind of man. Many people are good because they are afraid of trouble with the law, their wife, or husband, or their community. Their hearts are all the same, given over to the root of all sin, lawlessness in relationship to God as their Lord and lawgiver. Sin, moreover, is a religious act, because it is revolt against God and His law, and it is a religious faith that the tempter is right, and that every man has the right to be his own God, knowing or deciding what is good and evil for himself. Genesis 3, 5. The sinner is thus religiously against God and Christ. His faith is in something or someone other than the Lord. Essentially, it is faith in himself. For the ungodly, sin therefore is life. They hold that a person is not really living unless he is a party to sin, that is, to the sex revolution, the drug culture, or whatever else his sin may be. Such opinions show the religious nature of sin. For the Christian, life is Jesus Christ and his righteousness. This means that knowledge, holiness, righteousness, and dominion are not only the aspects of God's image in us, but also life for us. For us, then, sin is not life, but death, and righteousness is our way of life. If we find sin attractive, it is because we do not find Christ to be attractive to us. It means that an alien faith governs our hearts and dominates our thinking. To believe in Christ means to enjoy, not sin, but righteousness.